Hi guys, Dogo here with a new video and this video is a video that a lot of PvPers are going to love and that is going to be a change to the Weapons of Conquest quest it is quite a bit hard to say, conquest quest for the free glad weapon and we've decided to update it so that is great what happened is that now if you had the quest you were going to get a predefined weapon uh, for your spec and some specs got a bit like the shortest end of the stick for example on my if i believe on my Mar arms warrior i get like a crit weapon or no it was on my resolution paladin i get a crit uh, two-hander and obviously my mastery or even haste is way better than crit mastery is probably the best right now but um you can't choose that's a problem and you can also not change so for example if you're playing retribution paladin but you also wanted to maybe get the weapons for holy paladin well too bad you got the quest in as a retribution paladin you can't change your mind after three weeks but this is going to change so due to the concerns regarding the current implementation of the quest we took the opportunity to reevaluate how we could approach the situation try to putting weapon choice back in the hands of the player while smoothing out some of the rough edges that spark your feedback with hotfixes we'll make the following changes so the quest is now gone and removed from all players quest log and now we have a new achievement which is forged weapons of conquest that will be added to the feats of strength pvp category so if you are going to the achievements you're going to feats of strength pvp you're going to find the new forged weapons of conquest achievement with a criteria to earn 2.5k conquest during the war within season one of a new character that is also going to be retroactive so you're not going to lose any progress it is going to be just achievement based so if by mistake you did remove the quest and take it back you would have been gutted for at least two like four or five weeks but now it is just like baked into the achievement so you you can basically just rest easy you're going to get it but also upon completion of the con uh, achievement you will get two uh, forged gladiators weapons tokens via mail similar to the mark of spellinker supreme which is the 1600 uh, achievement uh, from the seasonal milestone achievement while in possession of these tokens, Lalandi in Turnogal will offer weapons from her entire selection, allowing you to choose your preferred weapons. Obviously, all 200 weapons will cost 2 tokens, and all one-handed and off-hand pieces will cost 1 token. So you could get a sword and a board, a uh, sword and board, so sword and a shield, or you can get like a double dagger, or you can get like a double sword, or you're going for a 200 weapon. So, for example, bow is also a two-handed weapon. Warrior are an exception to equi equitably accommodate fury. We will find we and will find that their two-handed strength options only cost one token. Now that this is like a great thing for them because obviously you can have a two-handed strength weapon, and you can then have a one-hander. So if you are wanting to tank or you're wanting to play. Uh, double one-hander um, double one-hander uh, fury warrior that is also an option uh, to be fair i think most people are going to take two two-handers because that is the most logical thing if you are going to do pvp as fury warrior and as arms warrior but maybe someone is like doing pve as protection warrior or you are like wanting to play protection warrior that would be not a, a problem you can have a two-hander as an arms warrior and you would have like a one-hander for your um for your protection warrior spec so that is a possibility it's not like a huge convenient thing it is just like normal it's not going to change like everything once you have spent both tokens we'll offer her weapons for conquest once more so that's cool they changed it finally and that is great these updates are planned for the next weekly maintenance at the time the seasonal conquest cap will be increased beyond the threshold needed to earn this achievement so at the third week which is next week you're going to be able to spend like the tokens that you're going to get for uh, your weapons obviously there's a lot of people that crafted their gear so who cares um i didn't do that i, cra I didn't craft my weapons on neither like basically all my characters have the same thing we went for like double like double like offhand like i got like one finger and then one neck and then a wrist for example or for someone I did like for for another character I did do one finger and then I did like um, I think boots and I kept like one heraldry for uh, in case if I wanted to craft another gear for example so those are things that you can do obviously 
uh, it was too early uh, that I actually uh, kept. But uh, um, I, I didn't really do weapons. So obviously this is going to be a huge thing for me because again, being able to choose your own weapons is great. Like for example, Enhancement Shaman, uh, having double haste or double mastery at least uh, are great options. I had like one crit and one one mastery, which is like the crit one is not something I would like. Uh, or for example, Retribution Paladins, if you are going for a two-hander, at least <clears throat> it will not be crit. So you could get the mastery one or the haste one. I don't know how many how much choices you have uh, with, with Lalandi because again not everything is available. Uh, I believe that there is a difference between the conquest gear and the world PvP gear where you have at least a bit more uh, options, for example. But uh, we'll have to see. In Dragonflight, you didn't have an option for every single stat. That that's all I know. Um, and for Shadowlands as well. So um, this is going to be a big update. I think a lot of people were concerned about it. A lot of outcry about it. And uh, this is going to be uh, a massive thing. So, obviously, <clears throat> it's not going to be a very long video. But I'm going to um, explain what's good about these changes. Uh, I think they are really concerned about PvP. I think B Battleground Blitz has been a huge success. Uh, Battleground Blitz is actually like the, the biggest bracket right now. So you have the most people playing that bracket. It is a bit logical because you need 16 players, but it is not that logical. Like RBGs, so team RBGs, was like the bracket that ha was the less populated one. It was a 10 v 10, but it was very hard to get in. Like doing pugs was very hard for like off specs. Like enhancement shamans would never get invited, no matter if you are clad or hero of the uh, horde or alliance or um, ho hero of the horde or alliance. It would not matter, right? Um, so that itself is a huge win for those off specs, but also uh, the barrier of entry is so low, like you, you can literally get a healer friend and you can just play together, right? And it's very fun, uh, although very frustrating, uh, but it has been a huge success. I also think that they are really, really up to date with um, what the, the needs are for, for PvP. Yes, you have a few like busted specs, but that is kind of PvP. In PvP, especially in PvP games, you always have like a meta where you have obvious S tiers, even God tiers, and then you have obvious D tiers, unfortunately. But that is just how PvP is. Now, what they need to do is make the D tiers have their moment of shining. And that requires maybe a rework, a PvP rework, or like a big balancing uh, towards numbers, which I prefer like a rework to make it like repurposed so you could have it not as OP because of the ba balancing numbers, but at least you have more utility where you could actually find always a reason why you would play that spec uh, if it's fun, but also design wise, it makes sense in PvP. Uh, you have some specs where it, no matter what, it all it always will depend about numbers being very very big. For example, fire mage, um, they are very squishy. The only thing that would make them OP or like played more than frost mage would be to do more damage on frost mage and easier uh, access to damage. But that would require a lot of like number tweakings, like literally 50% buffs on like power blast, for example. And if they do that, then it becomes like an endless cycle of buffs and nerfs. What you can do is actually like just rework the PvP side of things, like repurpose a lot of spells and talents that are maybe not updated or not useful for PvP. Make it useful. Make PvP talents maybe just a tree again, instead of like three spells that you're taking. Make it a huge tree, like the hero talents, but basically, but with choices where you can choose and you can like choose where you're going to be strong at and where you're going to be weak at. That's going to be something that they could work on. Um, but that's my two cents. Again, I think they're like on something with PvP. I think PvP hasn't been that hype since a long time ago. Uh, there's a lot of participation. Yes, you have like a threshold at social fall where I think it's 2.2K where you have like a soft cap, like a hard cap actually. Um, but um, the, that, that is inflation, it will come to a higher level. Um, and so QRBGs has been like something where people can climb reliably, although very frustrating. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching, have a great day, be sure to stay safe. We will catch up probably very soon in the next video, probably with better news. 
or with good news or with a bit of worse news. We will have to see in the future. Again, thank you. Have a great day. Bye.